Hi there. I am so happy you chose to worship God with us here at the Cloverdale Seventh-day Adventist Church. I invite you to allow the presence of God to fill you up. Also, if you are desiring to support the cause of Christ uh, through your kind generosity, or maybe you have some questions, please feel free to visit our website at uh, cloverdale.org. Pathfinders, Ford March. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pathfinders, face the flag, face. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Face front, face. Pathfinders, at ease. Adventures remain standing. Congregation, you may be seated. Pathfinder pledge in law. Pathfinders, raise your right hand. Because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. Jesus can help me be obedient, be pure, be kind, be true, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be thoughtful, be thoughtful, be reverent. They did exactly as we practiced. The program, <laughs> the program says Pathfinders, they are the adventurers and they did a great job. Pathfinders, adventurers, raise your right hand. By the grace of God, I will be pure, kind, and true. I will keep the Pathfinder law. I will be a servant to God and a friend to man. Keep the morning watch. Do my honest part. Care for my body. Keep a level eye. Be courteous and obedient. 
Walk softly in the sanctuary. Keep a song in my heart. Go on God's errands. Raise your, lower your right hand. Lower your hands. Okay. You folks may be, may be seated. Pathfinders, adventures at ease. You may be seated. Okay, today we're sharing another branch of our church youth ministries with you. This is our adventure, Pathfinder Sabbath. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Sabbath. I'd like to start by introducing the uh, Idaho Conference leadership. If you folks would stand, please. These are the folks that we answer to. They're, they, are, they are the most important people keeping us going. Appreciate it. You may be seated. And then I'd like to introduce our club leadership, and that's Adventures and Pathfinder leadership. Would you please stand? I want you to be recognized. These are the folks that... All right, you may be seated. These are the folks that carry the load. Um, I am so grateful, and, I, and they're just great, great, great folks. God is blessing our ministry. Uh, we've grown to 36 adventurers and 16 pathfinders. So um, we have 15 staff now, uh, the majority over in the adventure, obviously. They're, they're larger and then our pathfinder staff. So they're all great, absolutely great. We sure appreciate them. We want to thank you for your prayers and financial support as we continue to serve this age group uh, in, leading in leading them to Jesus. Now I want to uh, call your attention to a video we're going to share with you. Uh, this is going to feature our adventure up in Kalispell, Montana, and also the first two months only, the first two months of what this club has been doing. So please enjoy. Thank you. Beautiful day. I wonder why there's such a big crowd of people over there. Looks like a picnic. What's that girl doing jumping around? Now she's running this way. Hey, watch out, you'll trip on that tree stump. Whoa, you all right? I don't believe it, it's amazing, it's incredible. What's amazing, what's incredible? Hey you, slow down, you'll trip on that tree stump. Here, let me help you up. That was a beautiful face plant. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like it. I really wanna know what all the excitement's about, but there's someone else running this way. Hey, you, slow down. Ah. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Did you see what happened? It was Jesus. It was Jesus who did it. Will somebody please tell me what all the excitement's about? Jesus was teaching us. Jesus, the preacher from Nazareth, the one everyone's talking about? Yeah, it was him. There are about 5,000 of us listening to preach. He's so wise. Well, everyone was getting hungry, but no one had anything to eat. Then a little boy walks up and offers Jesus his lunch. All he had, though, was two pieces of fish and a few pieces of dried bread. Oh, no. What's wrong? Don't you like fish? No, there's someone else running this way. Incoming! Are you guys crazy? Huh? Oh, never mind. Keep going. Finish the story. So Jesus prays over the little pieces of bread, and he, he shares it with all the people. You should have seen their faces. They thought he was crazy. Jesus hands one little bit of bread to one disciple, and that disciple hands it to one of the crowd. When he turns around, another one of the disciples is handing some fish to somebody else. And it just kept coming. What do you mean it just kept coming? How could it just keep coming? I don't know, but everybody got enough to eat. I don't believe it. Nobody can do that unless they're God. You better believe it. See the crumbs on my mouth. Yeah, you could have just put them there. The laws of science say you can't feed 5,000 people with a couple of pieces of bread and two pieces of fish. It can't be done. He did it. Some people say he's God's son. He did it. Prove it. Ha, huh, you can't prove it. I bet he just told everyone to pretend they're full. I bet it's just a hoax. Ha, huh, you can't prove it. Look over there. Yeah, there's just a bunch of baskets. What are they? The leftovers. But there's 12 full baskets. That's the leftovers after 5,000 people ate? Oh, that makes snap. sense now. It 
It's amazing. It's a miracle. I've got to see him. I already said that. Watch out for that tree stump. Let's go tell, tell the, the world. world. Isn't it wonderful to have a young group leading out in the service? Isn't it incredible how much they've accomplished just this far in the year? We still have more to come. I am so happy that we have such dedicated leaders and volunteers in our Pathfinder and Adventurer Club. Thank you so much, Bill, our leader. Uh, let's give Bill a hand. No, it's, it's not an easy ministry to be involved with, but it is worthwhile. It's a wonderful ministry, the Pathfinder and Adventurer Club's ministry. As the kids were saying, let's go tell the world. This is part of what we'd like to tell the kids. Connor, would you like to come up and do the scripture reading for us? I was just waiting for you. I think we have a microphone right here. reading from John 6, 8 and 9. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad who has five barely loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Amen. Thank you. And we're going to see the baptismal candidates again here in a little bit and give them some gifts. But while they're getting ready, by the way, um, I have a blog and there's sermon notes on there. So if you want to go back and revisit the things that I talked about and the verses that I'm going to mention and go a little bit deeper in this study, feel free to do so. And my blog, if you scan it or if you just go prmarlon.com, it'll be up. In a little bit, it's not up right now because I don't want you to read ahead, but later on today it will be up and you can read the notes on the sermon. And I'll have the audio up again also later on. So there is, in the Bible, it's, there is this clear thrust, this clear intention of the gospel, the good news being spread. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, Jesus says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So people are asking Jesus, when is the end of the world? Jesus says, don't worry about that. Worry about preaching the gospel to everyone because once that takes place, then the end will come. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into this. It's going to be a short message, but I invite you to bow your heads with me as we get into it. Father in heaven, as we open the Bible to read it, we do not want to do it without first asking the same Holy Spirit that inspired the writers of the Bible to speak to our hearts and to teach us a lesson that we should take away from the story. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in Matthew 28, Jesus gives what we call the Great Commission to the disciples. It's verses 18 through 20. Jesus says, Go, uh, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The idea is Jesus is with us as we go and share the gospel with others. And again, in Revelation chapter 14, there is this, Revelation is a very symbolic book. There is these angels. Angel, the word means messenger. And they're flying through the heavens. And the, the angels are proclaiming the everlasting gospel. They're proclaiming it to the whole world, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. I believe that we are these messengers. The story that kids just talked about involves Jesus feeding the 5,000. There's a detail that was left out of the play, and that's what I'm going to dig into with you today. And that's talking about Andrew. Peter's brother. He's, Andrew's not very famous for doing a lot. There's no sermons of Andrew recorded in the Bible, but he has done a few things. So Andrew is mentioned in the, grand, in the Bible a grand total of 12 times. There's 12 verses that mention the name Andrew. Six of those mention Peter also at some point, uh, or actually mention him as being Peter's brother. And there is only one verse that there is no reference to Peter at all. So Andrew is always mentioned as someone who's tagging along with Peter, as Peter's brother, as someone who's 
part of a group where Peter is. So, you know, there is this question, did Andrew ever do anything besides tag along with Peter? And actually, if you, if you look at just in the book of John, in the times that it mentions Andrew, we see um, a clear line of action. He followed Jesus as the first time Andrew is mentioned. Later, he found his brother, Peter, and then he brought his brother to Jesus. And then he brought the boy with the five loaves and two fish. We're going to talk more about that. And then later, uh, Philip and Andrew bring the Greeks to Jesus. We're not going to talk about that story this time. Maybe in the future we'll go back to that. But it's so interesting because if you look at Andrew's approach to ministry, his accomplishments, it's always one-on-one. -on -one. It's him going, meeting someone, bringing them to Jesus. First he comes to Jesus and then the rest of his ministry, it's always one-on-one. -on -one. Now if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn to John chapter 6. And we're going to look at the feeding of the 5,000 real quick and see how Andrew plays a role in all of this. So John chapter 6, starting with verse 1, it says, After these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and the great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed to those who were deceased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover feast and the Jews was near, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing the great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii, or that's 200 days uh, wages, would not be enough to give a little bit of bread to each person. Now one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, right, as, as he is known, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Think about this with me. While the disciples are worrying that we don't have enough money, we couldn't buy enough bread, we couldn't possibly feed all these people, Andrew was walking around, mingling, making friends, found someone who was willing to share his lunch with Jesus, brought him to Jesus and said, look, I, I don't know how to solve this problem, but here's what I can do. I have a friend and I brought my friend to you. I can't solve the problem, but I'm bringing the problem to Jesus. And Jesus says, oh, I can solve this problem with the bread and the fish. Sometimes we think that we can't solve the problem and we feel paralyzed. We don't do anything because we can't find a solution. We can't solve somebody's problem, so we don't offer anything. Meanwhile, Andrew understood that he was not called to solve everybody's problems. He was called to bring them to Jesus. That's what Andrew did. There's no sermons from Andrew, but there's some amazing sermons from Peter. And guess what? If it wasn't for Andrew, there would have been no Peter. There's this great miracle where people finally believed that Jesus was the Messiah. They wanted to crown him king right then and there. But this miracle only took place because Andrew was willing to make friends and bring them to Jesus. When we think about sharing the gospel, I don't want you to be overwhelmed and think, oh, what if they ask questions that I don't know? Or I, I'm not good at public speaking or I don't want to preach. Or It's okay. Andrew gave us an example of what all of us can do. We can make a friend and introduce them to Jesus. But I can't solve their problems. That's okay. That's not your job. Jesus is the one who solves our problems. We just have to introduce people to Jesus. That's something that our adventurers can do. That's something that our pathfinders can do. That's something that we as parents can do. All of us can make friends and introduce them to Jesus. You know, it's really simple. Andrew is known for bringing people to Jesus. And I think that's something all of us can do. It's something we're teaching our kids to do. It's something that we can mentor them into doing and be the example as parents. So here's the, the challenge for you. Here's how we're going to make it very practical. The holidays are just around the corner. And with the holidays, it's going to be gatherings, right? Maybe it's going to happen at work. Maybe it's going to happen with your family. Maybe it's going to happen in your neighborhood, at the school. There's going to be gatherings. I want you to start thinking right now as Thanksgiving is coming, it's just around the corner. Start thinking, what has Jesus done for me? What has God done for me? 
What's a testimony? What's a story that I can share with somebody for something that God has told me? Think about that. Do you have that story in your mind? Now that you have that story in your mind, ask God, God, give me an opportunity to share this story with somebody. You're not going to preach at them. You're not going to hit them over the head with the Bible. But you are going to share, as God provides you the opportunity, what God has done for you. Simple, right? You can do this. You don't have to memorize any Bible verses. All you have to do is share with someone what God has done for you. Be like Andrew. Introduce people to Jesus and just let the conversation flow. If they ask you more questions, share from your experience. And if it reaches a point where you feel like this person might be ready for some Bible studies, reach out to me. Reach out to Pastor Jason. And I would love to coach you on how to share more with others. But don't worry about that step right away. Right now, I want you to think about one story, one thing that God has done for you this year. And have that story ready. And God will provide you with an opportunity to share that with a friend. And that way we can be like Andrew. That way we can do what we're encouraging our pathfinders to, go, to do. To go and to tell the whole world about salvation as a gift that God has made available to us through Jesus. But it starts with sharing one story with one friend. You know, before we have our closing prayer, I'd like to invite those who are baptized... Uh, to join me up here, we have a couple of gifts to give to you from our church. And I'd like to invite the... Oh, Bill is coming up. Okay, also to give them a special pin for their baptism. If I could have someone help... There you go. Thank you, Bill. Turns out the baskets were not just with the food. There's also baskets with gifts. Sure. The parents will please join us up here. In, in your bags, you're going to have a certificate of baptism into the Boise Pathfinder Club as well. So we welcome you into our club, and then you have Pathfinder Bibles, okay? I'd like to offer a pin of baptism to Kiara and baptism pin for Connor. So if you want to pin her or if you want to pin him, you may do that. There you are. It's official. Thank you. Thank you. And, and for Connor, who is a member of, of our church, I'd like to take this opportunity also. And, and the same will happen for Kira in her church. But uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to um, I make a motion that we accept Connor as an official member of the Cloverdale Seventh-day Adventist Church. All in favor, please say welcome. welcome. All right. And I'd love to have a special prayer with Connor and Kira uh, as we close the service. I invite you to stand with me as we have our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, Connor and Kira are standing up here because at some point in their lives, Someone was willing to share with them that Jesus loved them. And Lord, they wanted to learn more about Jesus. And as they studied the Bible and they came to learn more about the great love that God has for them, Lord, they decided to give their lives to Jesus. And Lord, as they walk out of here uh, born anew in your kingdom, Lord, I want to take this opportunity to challenge all of us who are here standing right now and maybe those who are listening to this later on or watching online. Lord, may all of us, including Connor and Kira, be willing to share about the love of Jesus with others who might not know. So, Father, give us a testimony. Remind us of what you have done for us. Give us the courage and the boldness to share with others that the whole world may know of your great love for them. So bless Kira and Connor in a mighty way. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Bless their parents. And Lord, may all of us be involved in sharing the good news with others. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. I hope you are blessed by today's message. If you have any questions or 
would like someone to pray with you or for you, please feel free to contact us. May God bless you and keep you till we meet again.